Hi again and welcome back. In this video we'll look at counting and numbers. Here are the numbers from 1 to 10. Number 1 has three forms depending on the gender. Masculine is heis, mia is feminine, and hen is uh, neuter. And we get the uh, word henotheism, which you might have heard, the idea that uh, there's one god that's your own god, but that there might be other gods. They might exist, even if they're not yours. Um, that's called henotheism. And the hen part there is from the uh, neuter form of the Greek number one, hen. Number two is duo. And uh, this alone has come over into English. Uh, we talk about duos. We always also talk about duets from the same uh, root. Number three is trace or tria, and this gives us words like tricycle and trident in English. Four is tesserus, and the uh, neuter form is tessera. And this is where we get the term tesseract. If you've ever watched Doctor Who, you might have come across that term tesseract, and that's where uh, we uh, derive the uh, term from. A tesseract is a four-dimensional cube. The number five is penta, and we get pentagon and pentathlon from that. Number six is hex, from which we get hexagon. Number seven is hepta, from which French derives the word set, and uh, if you are a real fan of track and field, you may be familiar with the heptathlon, which is a collection of seven events performed together. The number eight is octo, and this is where we get the words like octagon or octopus, which literally means eight foot. Enea is the Greek number nine, and it's the only of these ten numbers that uh, really doesn't leave much of a trace in English. But the number 10, deca, uh, we find lots of places in English. The decalogue uh, means the 10 words, and the decathlon, again, is even more familiar from uh, track and field than the heptathlon. Numbers are adjectives. That means one thing they can do is modify nominals. So I can say, Eche hepta artus, and I'm saying, he has seven loaves of bread. Or I can say, tria thugetres, how taste by nusi. I can say, uh, then, three daughters uh, are going with her. But numbers can also stand alone. Uh, they can do this in two ways. One is what's called ellipsis. If I say pasus artus theles, how many loaves of bread uh, do you want? I might answer thelo enea. Now, really what I would uh, be saying there if I made the thought complete is I want nine artus, nine loaves of bread. But as in English, we can leave the noun out if it's obvious which noun we're talking about. And so uh, we just say, Thelo Enea, I want nine. That's called ellipsis because it's leaving out a noun that it, it is there, at least in thought. On the other hand, just like other adjectives can be, numbers can be used as substantives. So if someone says, Tinas Zetes, uh, what are you looking for? We can say, tus hepta zeto. Uh, the seven. I'm looking for the seven. That could be seven things or the seven people. From five to one hundred, the numbers are indeclinable. Their form doesn't change for gender or case. But from one to four, from haste to tesseres, we do change the forms like other adjectives. Haste is the most completely uh, declined uh, of the numbers. 
the masculine and neuter are declined like regular third declension nouns, uh, except that, not unsurprisingly, the masculine nominative singular is irregular. Um, the genitive and dative forms of the masculine and neuter singular are the same, henos and heni. Uh, we haven't seen the dative case yet, by the way, but I'm including it here uh, for the sake of completeness, because we're going to see it in the next uh, badge set, and uh, you'll want to be able to look back at this video. So that dative form, uh, which is unfamiliar to you right now, you'll be able to figure out quite easily uh, as soon as you go on to the next badge set. Um, but the accusative, henna, in the masculine, and hen in the neuter are also fairly regular, because remember, uh, the neuter hen uh, is the nominative form, and with neuter adjectives and neuter nouns, the nominative and accusative forms are the same. The feminine forms are declined just like a regular first declension uh, noun, with alpha rather than eta for the connecting vowel. But there are no plural forms. Why? Because this is the number one. Uh, you wouldn't have ones, we have other numbers for those. So we only have singular forms in the uh, number one. With duo, on the other hand, uh, and all the rest of the numbers, all the forms are plural. And duo only actually has two different forms. Uh, the forms are the same for all three genders and the same in all but the dative case. Uh, and the dative plural, again, which we'll learn more about in the next badge set, is dusi or dusin, but the rest of the forms are just duo. Trace is a third declension adjective, um, so this time it's not the masculine and neuter that are similar. Now the masculine and feminine are identical in form, and the neuter is uh, the odd man out. The neuter has uh, slightly different third declension uh, endings. So the stem is tree, and the uh, masculine and feminine nominative is actually quite regular if you uh, see, think of the stem tree uh, running into the, uh, the uh, nominative plural third declension ending S, and then the iota and the S uh, becoming reversed, being mixed up. We go from tree S to trace. Uh, but the rest of the masculine and feminine forms are totally regular. Trion, trisi, trace, and trace again in the vocative. Uh, it looks very much like a polis type uh, third declension noun. In the neuter, the difference is simply that the uh, nominative plural neuter form uses the typical alpha ending, so tria, and, as usual, the accusative and the vocative of the uh, neuter plural are the same as the nominative. So tria is the nominative, tria is also the accusative, and tria is also the vocative. Uh, but the forms trion and tricin are the same across all three genders. Tesseres is another third declension uh, adjective. The stem this time is tessar, and uh, again we have quite regular plural forms tessares, tessaron, tessarsin, tessaras, tessares in the masculine and feminine, and in the neuter we have the same difference that we use the alpha ending in the neuter nominative plural, and that that form is always the same as the accusative and the vocative for, plural, uh, for uh, neuter nouns. Uh, just notice the dative form, uh, because instead of tessar uh, essi or tessarasi, uh, the c or scene ending gets butted right, right up against that row. Um, we don't actually see that all that often, so the form is uh, more regular than we might expect, tessarsin. To count from 11 to 19, we combine the numbers 1 to 9 with deca, 10. Uh, for 11 and 12, the numbers are jammed right together. So we have hen deca, and uh, 
for 12, instead of duodeca, the upsilon and om uh, omicron contract together I into one omega, so we get dodeca. From 13 to 19, we connect the, the uh, first number with the second number with deca by the conjunction chi. And the words can either appear separately, or they can, as I've done here, be jammed right together as a single word. So 13 is tres kaideka, uh, 14 is tesser kaideka, 15 is penta kaideka, 16 is hex kaideka, 17 is hepta kaideka, 18 is octo kaideka, and 19 is enea kaideka. Twenty is quite irregular. It's a cosi. You can imagine uh, if you reconstruct it how we end up with that form, but it's probably easier just to memorize it as a cosi. Uh, the rest of the tens are the numbers three to nine with the suffix conta, so tria conta and tessera conta. Um, from fifty on, we start to see some changes. Uh, based on lazy pronunciation of the initial number. So uh, 50 through 90 use an eta as a connecting vowel between the two numbers before the conta uh, ending, and that's just in aid of pronunciation. So instead of pente conta, we have pente conta and hexe conta. Uh, in 70 and 80, the combinations uh, p tau and uh, kappa tau are softened to uh, beta delta from p tau and gamma delta from uh, kappa tau. So instead of uh, heptome conta, we have hebdome conta. And instead of octoe conta, we have ogdoe conta. Notice too, in 70, we have an extra mu before the connecting vowel. Um, why? Again, probably because it was a little bit easier to pronounce. So it's not heptoe conta, it's hebdome conta. In 90, the difference or the change is that uh, the second nu and epsilon are reversed. Instead of enea, we have enenna or enene. So enene conta instead of enne a conta. And you can hear, even when I try and say enne a conta, how much easier it is to say enne a conta. Those are the tens from 20 through to 90. How do we express none? Well, we use the uh, number or pronoun uh, udes, udemia, udem, which means no or none. The stem ud or ude uh, gets added on to the forms of heis. So really, uh, udes, udemia, uden is completely regular, very easy to figure out if you remember all of your forms of heis, mia, hen. Uh, the only thing to remember is that since the, the number one is being added to the end, we can't have a rough breathing in the middle of a word, so the rough breathing, if it's there, is dropped. Like other uh, numbers, uh, udes, udemia, and uden can act like an adjective and modify a nominal. So we might say udemia gala kaka, and that would mean no milk is bad, or none of the milk is bad. But it can also act like a pronoun, and it really is a pronoun. Uh, udes agathos, we're saying no one udes is good. Or we can say uden echomen, we have nothing, uden. You can learn more about Greek numbers in Mounts' Basics of Biblical Greek, third edition. Uh, he really only says very much about the first three numbers, but I've given you the uh, sections and page numbers for the third edition there.